Yaskawa. <laughs> All right, good morning. My name is Doug Meyer. I'm a senior project engineer here at Yaskawa. And uh, this morning I'm going to talk about three additional blocks. And uh, some of these are, um, I guess, a, a larger combination of some of the ones we've already spoken about. So let's get started with the product buffer. Well, the product buffer is actually one of the more popular blocks, actually. Uh, I was talking to Kevin about this yesterday, and we probably have um, close to 150 to 200 machines installed in the field using this particular block. And what it does is it stores captured or latched positions from an axis and keeps them into a circular buffer for use elsewhere in the program. And uh, very useful for um, those continuously running type applications that require registration or synchronization, things like labeling, cut to length, uh, maybe a thermoforming type axis where um, some sort of process needs to happen to capture data, but you might have additional latches come in before you can finish the process. So you need somewhere to store them temporarily. So the main features of this product buffer is uh, it has up, uh, a, a place to store the captured data up to 100, but it is a configurable size, as we'll see. It has a built-in uh, latch function using an MC touch probe. It also has, uh, for those applications or maybe machine modes where you just want to do some testing um, or you don't want to use the actual latch input of the sensor, you can set a, uh, if you activate that test mode input, then you can just give it uh, triggers from the program. And um, it also features the three main pointers into the buffer that we're going to talk about next. Uh, that is the store pointer, a use pointer, and a previous use pointer. Um, now, the, uh, this block has this input called registration data. And registration data is of a, uh, a certain data type called a product buffer struct. So let's take a moment to look at the product buffer struct for just a second. Um, the, uh, the structure contains 12 elements. Four of them are for configuration. That's for the buffer size, uh, the sensor that is going to be doing the latching, um, a manual offset, and then a lockout distance to help prevent false triggers and false data from being stored in here. Uh, there's the two main elements for storage of the latched positions or captured positions. Uh, one is the, uh, the cyclic buffer, which if you have a rotary axis that's modulating on a machine cycle, it would always give you the latched position within that machine cycle. And whether you have the axis configured as a rotary or linear, um, the, you always have available to you the non-cyclical position that starts from zero and pretty much goes forever. And then the other six are for usage of the function block itself, uh, the main ones being the pointers. Um, for those that have used this block or uh, attempted to teach other people uh, how to use the block, um, it's also helpful to know which are inputs to the block and which are outputs. And see, there's only a couple of key outputs. That is the, the latched positions themselves and the storage pointer location. Uh, inputs to the block that, that uh, the user needs to provide are to specify the buffer size and the sensor, the manual offset, and the lockout distance. And then the program is also required to update the, the use pointers and the previous use pointers. The other ones that have a gray box are, are there, but they're for use uh, elsewhere in the program, uh, there's nothing inside the product buffer block that does anything with those three for sensor distance, sensor offset, and product away distance. So having said that, so now we know uh, what the structure is a little bit, let's take a look at the buffer layout itself. And uh, first of all, the buffer size. So this is the length of elements in the buffer. Uh, so the pointers will increment starting from zero up to this buffer size minus one. Uh, the storage pointer is the next available location to capture and the function block will automatically increment this pointer when a new value is loaded. And if the storage pointer ever catches up to the previous use pointer, then it will signify sort of a wraparound type condition where the elements have not been consumed um, as fast as they've been put in, and so that will generate an error for the block. 
The, uh, the use pointer and the previous use pointer, uh, the only thing that the block does with these is initialize them to zero, um, or uh, set them to their initial values, rather. The use pointer will be at the, at the front of the buffer. The previous use will be put at the end of the buffer. Uh, but the user is responsible for incrementing these. And typically, the program will identify some sort of difference between the store pointer location and the use pointer location. And that will trigger that current value to be used. So let me give you an example of how the buffer flows. So initially, um, the use pointer and storage pointer are set to element 0. Previous use is always one behind, so it's set to the top of the buffer. And uh, say we get uh, a latch, a captured position. So the storage pointer puts it in element 0 and then indexes itself to the next location. The program then detects that difference and it'll trigger that value at index 0 to be used. Now, the beauty of the buffer is that while that process is going on, um, we can capture another value as shown here. So here another value came in, the storage pointer incremented itself again. Now the process is finished and the use pointers are incremented. But it's noticed that since there's still a difference between the use pointer and the store pointer, another process has started and then the values will be incremented again until uh, once again the use pointer and store pointer are equal and the process will simply just wait for the next uh, captured value. Uh, one of the only tricky things about the structure itself um, that sometimes causes some confusion is the sensor input uh, because <clears throat> it's a data type trigger ref and it's really a pointer to which uh, input on the axis is going to be used for the latch trigger. So there's more help in the, uh, the toolbox help file. But here's what it is. So for our demo kit, uh, we actually have an LIO-01 uh, card installed. And you have two options. If you set the bit to zero, it'll use the C channel of the encoder. Uh, we recommend, and, and, and in most cases, I would say all the cases in the field, we just use the high speed input on the encoder card. And so that's uh, actually fixed at digital input number one. The other values that are in that structure, things like a lockout distance um, is uh, the distance that it must travel after it's first been captured before the, uh, the latch will rearm itself. And if we have some sort of match point, the sensor distance is the distance upstream that the sensor is from that match point. And then we have a couple of offsets available for use. So I'm going to give you an example here of how to use the product buffer. Um, a simple box diverter, say we, we capture a box upstream, 24 inches upstream, and then you know, 24 inches downstream, it's just going to kick it off to the side. So the, you can use the, uh, the, the box sizes and, and spacing and pitch, things like that, to help determine what um, are the settings for your buffer size and your lockout distance. So in this case, um, you know, you do have to configure a couple of the inputs for the product buffer. So here we've configured our buffer size, set it at 6. Uh, we've told it which sensor input to use. We set the sensor distance and a lockout distance. And I've just left my offsets at, at 0. Um, so let's show you how this works here. We'll uh, enable the buffer right here like this. and. Uh, as an aside, this is, a, uh, this is a simple way to do a little toggle bit here by using a rising trigger and a little set reset function. And this yellow thing here is uh, what's known as a toggle boolean. So if we uh, define this input in our worksheet as a toggle boolean input, then I can check this toggle boolean values and it's very helpful for remote debug. Okay, so the product buffer is enabled, and I've placed this into a watch window so you can see the values change. So the previous use pointer is set at the top of the buffer, and the storage and use pointers are set to zero. So now I, I'll come down here, and uh, now before I do this, I'm going to run the master here. So I go back, and, and you can see that. Again, uh, you know, our applications tend to build on itself, so we always try to use the toolbox functions whenever possible. So I have an access control block here. 
for each of my axes. I'm also using the read parameters block that Nishant just described. So I'll enable my axes. I can run the master. And now I'll uh, capture some inputs. Um, I'm working with a special demo kit that we have where we have uh, some signals loop back. So some of the outputs and the position of our uh, main axis one is fed back into the external encoder. So if I trigger some latches to happen, uh, we see that my storage pointer just incremented. Here it is again. And if I look at the buffer, you can see that every time I get a latch, it'll store it into the next location. And when it reaches the top, it'll wrap around. So the product buffer does the first half of your application. Um, the second half is actually using those buffered values. And, and it always requires some sort of um, customized function block to use it. So here I have my little detection where I detect the difference between the use pointer and the store pointer. And then I run this calculation. And inside here, we take in the, uh, the buffer data at my use pointer location, the non-cyclical value. Use things like the sensor distance and the manual offset to create a new target position. And then I update the pointers, just like this. So. Here's my customized calculation, setting a new target position, and then making moves. I'll show you um, a little uh, screenshot of a trace. Here's the, uh, the latch input coming in. Uh, this first value here is our store pointer, and then the use pointer. And then here's my little axis two. Uh, moving out and moving back to kick the box out of the way 24 inches downstream. So this latch input here causes that motion, this one causes this motion, this one causes this motion. 